Education Institute Facebook page for those of you who are tuning in there as well as the Canadian Immigration Institute YouTube channel. Now, those of you who are on Facebook, Facebook has been real jerks lately and have been blocking these as somehow containing um, proprietary information. Last I checked, <laughs> when I'm talking, and I'm the only person talking, uh, and everything I show is in the public domain, not quite sure how it breaches those, uh, those um, issues, but obviously, YouTube is the place to watch this, but I'm going to keep it going out to uh, Facebook for a little bit longer, and then I'm probably just going to shift to YouTube and do these live on YouTube. So with that being said, as always, welcome to the amazing people that are faithful followers. Ralph here. Welcome. Today I decided to scrap the green screen, and so I've got my office here behind me, and uh, that's where I'm recording from. And uh, no green screen, so this is the real deal, which is, uh, which is good. Now, I do know that my audio sometimes uh, isn't syncing perfectly with my video. So give me a thumbs up if you see the audio syncing with the video. Otherwise, I may shut this down quickly and restart it and try to get the, um, the audio syncing a little bit better with the actual video. But let me know if you have any issues with that. Give me a thumbs up if it's good. If there's a little bit of a delay between the audio and the video, it's because of my this mic right here this one is my Heil PR40 which is so much better than the other ones and so I've just made the decision that I'm I'm actually gonna keep using this now it's probably a little bit loud but we'll see okay good we're getting lots of it's good mark and I hope the audio is okay I hope it's not too loud um, I have been doing a little bit here within my system to uh, to adjust the audio level so it might be coming in a little loud in fact it looks that way I'm gonna back it off just a little bit here and uh, it's always a matter of <laughs> technical issues. And boy, if anybody's watching these videos, they're probably thinking, Mark Holthy, what is he doing? Like he spends more time adjusting his audio and his video than actually answering questions, which is probably true. So those of you who've tuned in, welcome. Thanks for joining me. I am Canadian immigration lawyer, Mark Holthy, former Canadian immigration officer and high school teacher. And I take all of those past lives and blend them all together. Uh, to provide this, you know, this live Q&A, something that I don't think there are too many other lawyers doing it right now, probably because they're not crazy enough like me to actually do this. So we've got a bunch of people who are tuning in and I want to give everybody a shout out. We've got lots of thumbs ups, which is really, really good for me. Uh, let's see who we've got here. We've got, um, we've got Farshad who's, who's tuning in. It's great to have you, Farshad. Let's see, we've got Justice who's, who's connecting in with us. Uh, Karen, hello to you. Uh, Corazon, hello to you as well. Make sure guys that when you're doing this that you uh, post where you're tuning in from because I love to see where everybody's connecting in when we're doing these live Q&As. So let's see who else we've got here. Uh, I'm doing right here, we've got Sanjay and uh, I'm doing awesome Sanjay, thank you very much. Let's see who else we've got here in our awesome group that are tuning in. <laughs> we've got a bonjour. Hello to you too, Harsi. Good to have you joining. We've got Cleusa. Oi, Tom Beng. Oi, a você Tom Beng. I'm assuming from Brazil. All right, let's see who else we have here. We've got a bunch of thumbs up saying the audio is good, which is great. And um, yeah, it's always a work in progress. Eventually, I'm going to reach the stage where I won't have to do this. But hey, I am a one-hit wonder. Igor's been fantastic. He's been tuning in. He's been helping me with a bunch of things. But the reality is right now, this is really a matter of me just kind of managing everything, which is kind of fun because I can shift around. I can, uh, you know, I can do different things. Um, as we're waiting for people to join in, we've got a really good group today. Mina, how are you, my friend? Um, I want to let you guys know that I was really, really looking forward to having um, Alvero come and talk to me today. But the reality is he was having a difficult discussion with his former consultant, probably about maybe getting some money back or something today. And so he wasn't sure if he's going to be making it in time to join us. So next Tuesday, because this Wednesday I am going and I'm going to show you guys where I'm headed right here. I went up, got our campsite set up. And I think I still have it here. Let me just see. Maybe I don't. Maybe I haven't uploaded it here. Let me just see if I can drag it right in. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. As we're loading in, today's gonna be a fun one. It's gonna be a little bit more rough and tumble. I don't have real specific things that I'm gonna teach, but here, I'll show you what I got planned for Wednesday. It really doesn't get much better than this. Fishing in a nice, beautiful, crystal clear mountain stream. 
<laughs> so there you go. We'll jump back here if I can uh, unlock it and then move back. So that is what I've got planned. A nice stream Wednesday through Sunday. I'm going to be gone doing a little bit of fishing and there is no connection whatsoever. So Thursday, there won't be a live Q&A. Next Tuesday, I'll be back again and Alvaro will be joining me. Those of you who are tuning in wondering who is Alvaro, well, he is someone that just, we had a wonderful, wonderful thing happen. Um, he had used a, a consultant, it didn't go very well, and um, his application, his express entry application was refused because of that terrible issue of the not code not matching with the duties in the reference letter. So we transferred the file away, the file was actually refused, his money was returned, then we went in, we got a copy of the GCMS notes, those are the global case management notes. Those are the ones that give you access to the real reasons for refusal. Then I prepared a reconsideration request that we sent back to the government and we were able to, um, for the first time in as long as Express Entry has existed, the last five years, actually get immigration to agree to reopen it and to, um, and to move forward. And in the case of Albero, it took less than about a week and a half for him to become a permanent resident. And he got the letter saying, you're a permanent resident, all done. And big, massive shout out to immigration for being willing to actually look at it and to consider it. Now, I spent hours and hours drafting the submission, explaining all of the details in the background, why the application should have been rejected, should not have been rejected. And they agreed with me, at least the officer that reviewed it. So very, very grateful for immigration. Um, they showed a lot of mercy, uh, mercy there. And normally they are pretty ruthless, but it was a huge, huge thing. So I just had to bring Alvaro on to tell his story because I think many of you who book consults with me face these similar issues. You, you face the situation of having um, an application refused through a small little simple mistake. And his reference letter wasn't perfect, it wasn't. Um, but I, there was enough, obviously, for me to make an argument that it still worked. So that's what lawyers do, right? That's what I do. Okay, let's see who all these other awesome people that are tuning in, who have tuned in. We've got a lot of people giving me thumbs up on the audio, which that's really helpful for me. Um, <laughs> Gerline says it's perfect. We've got so many people joining here, and I don't want to leave anyone out. So if I haven't acknowledged you, please know that I see you. I see your comment, and the other members do as well. It's nice to see Facebook hasn't yet... Uh, dropped. This is a good question. This person says, what will the draw be for tomorrow? Who knows? The title of this live Q&A today is, will the, f the federal skilled worker programs continue? And I can tell you, from my experience, I believe that they will continue. The question is, will it be a CEC draw tomorrow? Will it be a federal skilled worker draw? which the last one, remember, was 468, 3,900 um, invitations to apply were extended, which was a real big number to draw out. And in a way, it was kind of a little bit of a catch up. But ultimately, the big question is those who are sitting, hoping and seeing that the, the rounds of invitations drop and drop and drop are now in a situation where they're hoping, at least if you didn't quite get drawn, especially you that are below 430, are just hoping maybe there's another CEC draw that will scoop you out. And so that's what we're waiting for. But one thing I do know is that the federal skilled worker draws will continue. So that much we do know. But realize everyone that if you're outside of Canada, even if you're inside of Canada, but you have a dependent outside of Canada, immigration is not pushing forward with finalizing those um, permanent resident applications. Only people that are in Canada are getting the, the email notification with the attached letter that says, voila, you are a permanent resident. So because of that, um, even if you're outside of Canada, you're still in limbo, you're still stuck. The world is still crazy. There are still multiple waves of coronavirus that are, that are circulating back and forth. Like in India, you know, what is it, wave three? You know, in the US, they're going through their how many waves? And really, I don't think they ever got it under control to start with. And so many countries are like that. So there's still a lot up in the air with respect to the travel restrictions. Now, as we're going forward, addressing once again this Facebook user, the reality is right now, as it stands, um, we don't know 100% if there's going to be a draw tomorrow, but there's more than likely there will be. So I'm going to say it's going to be a federal skilled worker draw only, not a CEC, but I could be wrong. 
I, like many of you, are crossing my fingers and hoping that there will be one later in August for sure, at least one more CEC, but we'll see what happens. All right, okay, let's see what else we got going on here. <laughs> Arcee says, Como va tu? <laughs> well, that's a good question. If I could only speak French. I took French in high school, but that's as far as I could get. Uh, how about ça va bien? <laughs> Is that <laughs> ça va bien? <laughs> All right. Okay, we got some thumbs up. <laughs> Sahil says, sing a song to confirm. My friend, if I had any talent whatsoever with singing, I would seriously consider that. But I do not want to cause all of you um, uh, significant problems <laughs> with your eardrums. All right. And that's awesome. Sahil is tuning in from, um, from Periscope Twitter, which is awesome. Uh, and there... There's the, there's the answer, Faltu. So, will federal skilled continue? And from my perspective, Mark Holthy says, yes, it will. All right, let's keep moving down here. Uh, Kings here says, hello. Uh, Mohammed says, huge fan, welcome, welcome. And we've got obviously, Sax says, hey, I'm hoping this time it's gonna be a CEC draw. It could be, it could be. I think a lot of people are really, really looking forward to that. All right, Justice over in Toronto, welcome. Great to have you. We've got the Australian representation from Arjun. Great to have you. Welcome back, Ram. Great to have you back. Uh, we've got uh, Doina from Lebanon, fantastic. Another Facebook user. And you can see Facebook restricts the actual identity of the people. Welcome to Facebook. So I wish I could give you guys individual shout shouts out. Uh, Yai is in Egypt, good to see you. Uh, Mods, great to have you. Andrea, great to have you con connecting with us. And Kings is over there in, in Regina. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. We've got Brad's tuning in from Scotland. Oh no, after my visa ran out and knock code not accepted. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry, Brad. That's terrible. You should have connected with me, my friend. Farshed from Iran, great to have you. Uh, we've got Trinidad. Steve, awesome. I'm really looking forward to working with you and your son. Great to have you join us. Uh, Justin's over in India. Hope you're keeping safe, Justin. And uh, all of you all over the world, I hope that you're staying safe. Now I'm gonna have to zip through this till we get to some questions. Um, Callum, big shout out to you. Callum's got the craziest profile picture, I swear. Like, I don't know, was that one of those runs where they throw the powdered ink at you? Or was it the that, that Indian festival, I can't remember what it's called, where they're, they're throwing paint at people. I'm assuming that's what it was, Callum. <laughs> All right. They're just, oh, that's great. Great, great. So we've got lots of people are tuning in. Thanks so much for doing that. Um, okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, <laughs> Agam says, hey, Harsi, where are you learning French from? That's probably a good question because understand one really good way of also increasing points um, to try to compensate for say a lack of eight, like an age that is getting too old and losing points is to learn French. So maybe that's a new thing that I should start is French language training. All right, excellent. Okay, let us, um, what I'm gonna do is I just wanna point out something for everybody uh, that um, I probably haven't done at this stage. And let me just go back here. Okay, so I wanna show you this screen. So a lot of people are asking lots of questions and because I can't always get to the answer, I'm gonna go back here and I'm also gonna close Agam off of there. Okay, right here, what you're gonna see, and I'm actually gonna increase this so that you can see it a little bit easier. This page is, um, and we'll move this over here. There, now you guys can see it. So this page is actually really important. And, um, and this one, you can even search for this, Travel Restriction Measures COVID-19 Program Delivery. This is the source, guys, of information. This is where you go if you want to know what's the latest. You know what? What? How are they dealing with people who are waiting to have their PR finalized? How are they dealing with um, with students or with workers or people wanting to come visit family members? This is where the travel restrictions and the COVID nineteen program delivery instructions are contained. And as you go through here, you can see here, travel restrictions affecting foreign nationals, travel for optional or discretionary purposes, definition of family members, and then those departing from countries other than the US, all of the various permutations you can see here. Um, all of this is all contained within this page here, and I strongly encourage that you take a look at it. 
I'm not going to take a lot of time to, you know, to go through this, but I get a lot of questions about these travel restrictions and so I'd encourage you guys to go take a look at it because the answers are there. Sometimes it's hard to find them because you don't know what to search for, but that's what you're looking for right there, okay? So pay attention to that, put that into your, your search browser and you can get the answers that you need. If you have questions, you're uncertain about anything, one of the things that we do a lot of for our clients right now, and you can access it right by coming to our website by clicking start here and booking a consultation with us. Susan Wood, who is my associate who works in our Edmonton region, she, Edmonton, Alberta region, she has become quite, quite the knowledgeable expert on this topic. And so when it comes to figuring out what you need to do to demonstrate your, your quarantine compliance, your plan for how you're gonna self-isolate, um, determining what you need and actually, really what you need in order to board a plane to be able to come and to find an exemption under the travel restrictions. Susan is my go-to person and I'm gonna bring her on and we're gonna talk about a bunch of things here in a little bit, but, uh, but at this stage, I just wanted to point that out for you guys. If you have any additional questions, you can always book a consult with us. All right, let's jump back here to, um, let's see here what I got going, there we go. Okay, moving down to some other questions. Uh, Ram has, he says, <laughs> he's got from India, in Regina, permanent resident of Canada, and I love your services. Awesome, Ram, that's so cool. I love it when people come in and um, are just watching, even though they've already gone through the journey. In essence, we have so many, um, what I would call as, well, what would I call them? I guess they would be Canadian Immigration Institute alumni or graduates of the Canadian Immigration Institute. There's so many of you guys out there. And, and you know, it's so fun to have you come back and, and give shout out, so very, very cool. Okay, um, let's keep going down. Let's start answering some questions for you guys. I'm just gonna try to adjust my, my screen there. There it is, a little bit crisper. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, um, okay, so here's a good question. Okay, so this one's coming in from Facebook. And um, as always, I can shift around here a little bit. I think I'm gonna slide over just a little bit to make it easier, although now I'm gonna to need to focus my, my little lens a little bit more. There we go. So my experience is 10 days short of three years. Will immigration officer consider it three years? I had to resign immediately and come to Australia for my master's program. Ah. Do you know what? I think you're gonna have a real, real hard time getting it through. If you were continuing to work and you were able to um, recapture that time, then one thing I've discussed with a lot of clients is whether or not you choose to decline the ITA, wait until you regain that work experience and then get drawn again or take a run at it by waiting till you actually claim the work history, then submitting your EAPR and then making it, you know, and then explaining basically that, hey, it's not your fault you got the ITA. Immigration just issued it early because work history is counted on a month by month basis within express entry. And so lots of people run into that issue. So, all right, good stuff. Okay, so now let's go from here to the next question. So in your case, Mr. Facebook user, I can tell you that it is not going to uh, that, that's probably not going to fly. It'll be very, very unlikely for that to happen. Okay, so uh, Yogra says, I got it. I got an ITA with a score of 485. However, I have not completed my CEC one year yet. Still 20 days to go. Should I accept or decline? Accept it once I complete one year experience. Okay, so, so Yograj, I'll tell you right now as I do for, for most people. Let's see if I can even advance it here. Let's go to the next screen. So right here, what I want to tell you is that, um, and I'm going to jump back right to this screen, um, you need to book a consult for me to give you direct advice as to whether or not to decline an ITA. That is a super, super, well, how do you even describe it? Let's just say it's something that's, uh, it's going to be unbelievably, well, I'm actually getting right off the screen here. It's going to be an unbelievably difficult decision to make that depends upon a whole bunch of facts that relate to your specific situation. So I don't have my little bell up here. At least I don't think so. Let's see, maybe I can do it here. There we go. So this is where I would probably do this <laughs> and then just confirm that um, Yograj's question here really relates to, as much as anything, it relates to a specific legal question that I'd need to address with you um, offline, essentially. But for the same reasons that I've talked about before, 
it really comes down to um, whether or not you think you're going to get another ITA. And um, if you don't think you're going to get another ITA, then in many cases, people will just go soldier forward and, um, and then make the case, wait till they've got the full three years or one year in your case, and, and then submit your EAPR and make a good argument uh, as to why the Section 11.2 um, assessment that the officer does determining eligibility, why you still meet that eligibility. So there you go. That's the argument. And uh, that's what I do. Okay, let's keep burning down through here. Um, okay, let's see what we've got. I think I need a new mouse is what I need. This one right here is not working very good. I don't like it. It is, it's kind of hesitating and not working as good as I'd like it. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, <laughs> I love the fact you guys are talking back and forth. This is great. Okay, uh, Darsham, we'll give you a shout out. You're tuning in from Mississauga. Darsham, you have an unbelievably uncanny resemblance to Tom Cruise. Like it's it's uncanny. You look you look exactly like Tom Cruise. That is amazing. <laughs> awesome. It actually looks like Facebook is still holding on here. So we do have people. If you're tuning in through the Express Entry Law Facebook group, the reason I can't see your image like Muhammad here is because um, the, the F Express Entry Law private Facebook group, which many of you probably are aware of, those who are not aware of it, I'm just gonna pull it up here so that you guys can see what's happening. But the, the Express Entry Law private Facebook group is an amazing little group. Well, it's not so little anymore. That's all designed to help people um, network together, to share their experiences and to help one another. And you can see this little group that we have here it's growing and growing. And uh, and right now, as I look at it myself, um, I can see that the group is still hovering right around 124,600. It doesn't matter how many new people I add. You know, if I, it, it really doesn't make a difference how many people I add. Facebook never lets me go over 125,000. So yeah, that's a whole different discussion, but who cares? It's not the quantity, it's the quality, right? That's what it's about. Okay, so those of you who are in the Express Entry Law Group, this is being pushed out to it live. But if you want to get your image and actually allow me to see your name, go over to the Canadian Immigration Institute page, and there I'll be able to identify you as I'm doing here with Mohammed. So, great. Okay, let's see who else we have here. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is a long one, but I'm going to pull it up for you, Andrea. So Andrea says, Mark, in case um, where you have traveled to one country a year ago for more than six months and got a PCC from that country, dated 2019 after your trip there, is this PCC still valid to RCC now in 2020 or we do, do we need to get another one? Thank you. This is a great question. So the key here that Andrea is saying is that she obtained the police certificate from that country after, okay, after the trip was over. And that is the key. When your police certificate is obtained after you've gone there and you haven't returned, then that police certificate remains valid. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna shift back to the website right here, okay? And then I'm going to pull up, uh, we can probably stop sharing this one. We're gonna go to the completeness check site. And I think you guys have seen this time and time again, the completeness check site is really where you're going to get all the information that you need with respect to the validity of documents, what you're including, all those kinds of things. So in this right here, applications for permanent residence, you can see right here, for permanent residence program subject to the completeness check, that's what you're going to search for, okay? Then if you go down here, you'll see that there's a section specifically geared towards police certificates, okay? And we've got it right here. And one thing you'll see here, so you have to provide it for every country that you've lived in for at least six months or more in a row, not cumulatively. That used to be the rule, okay? And you can see here, you don't have to worry about whatever expiry date says on the police certificate because it's Immigration Canada, Citizenship and Immigration Canada, now called Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada, that's making that call. Now, the neat thing about this is that when you're doing um, your police certificates, um, <laughs> okay, so you can see here, 
where the individual has spent more than six months in a row in the last 10 years, they need to provide it. And obviously anything before the age of 18, you don't need to do that. And then here's another critical aspect. It must be a scan of the original police certificate in color. If it's not, it will get rejected. And you have to provide, um, and you can see here, certified copies and un are, are unauthorized copies are unacceptable. This creates a lot of confusion for people because for any translated document, they specifically tell you to include a, um, what do you call it? The actual uh, certified true copy. So you're kind of in a rough situation when you're trying to figure out what to do. Okay, this is a little bit weird because I'm trying to make myself fit here and work and okay, so we're good. Let's keep moving along here. Actually, I'm just gonna refocus myself. Okay, so now let's go down to the specific question that was asked. All right, so um, let's just see here. I'm just looking at these instructions to see. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, interesting. This is interesting. I thought it actually explained it here. I thought they, it actually explained the validity and the expiry date. I probably missed it. Let's see. Okay, well this is awesome. See, I haven't looked at this site for quite a while. And it's stupid that they don't have the, the explanation of the expiry. When you're going through your links, so this is the completeness check. Uh, and I'm not going to give up just yet. I know you guys are, um, I know you guys are, uh, are, are anxious to get your questions answered, but I hate being stumped. So when it comes to getting your police certificate, here's the instructions here. But when it comes to actually the validity of them, let's just go back here and we're going to take the the top one here. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to find this one. Okay. How do I get one? How long is it good for? Okay. Depends on which program you're applying for. Here's the instructions. Okay. Oh, seriously. My goodness. This is horrible. Now, I'm assuming it's it's probably okay for you guys who need to be handheld and kind of show where <laughs> this is brutal. Okay, this does not help at all. They totally removed it. Okay, I'm going to give a big thumbs down to immigration here because I used to use this all the time for you guys when I was trying to show you where to find the information yourself because that's super important for me is that you guys all have the ability to, um, <laughs> to, to get the answers that you want to receive when you need to receive them. Man, that is crazy. I can't believe that. That is so crazy. Okay, forget about that. I'm not going to waste my time anymore. The reality is, if you've left the country and you obtain the police certificate after you've left, wow, did we waste a lot of time on this question. It doesn't expire. It never expires. It's valid, valid, valid. So that's the issue. But if you got the police certificate after, uh, or I should say before you left that country, or in cases where you've returned since getting it, even if it's for a little holiday, I still don't take that chance. If you've returned, I always get a new police certificate. Okay, wow. <laughs> All right, we're leaving it, we're leaving it at that. Sorry guys, what a crazy, uh, well, what a crazy journey that was. <laughs> okay. All right, let's keep moving on here. Um, okay, here's a question from another, uh, this is a YouTuber, so Sajad says, does our one-year work experience have to be with one employer? No, it doesn't. And that comes down to the Federal Skilled Worker Program assessment. So this time, I do know that I'm not going to cause problems by shifting here back to the website. So we're going to go here, but this time we're going to go to the FSW um, eligibility. And one of the things that you're going to see when you go to the eligibility, it all comes down to the, the skilled work experience. And one thing you'll notice here when it comes to your experience, you have to have at least one year of skilled, continuous work that is full time, which is 20 hours per week. But you can see here that you can use full time at more than one job. So you can use um, two different jobs for two different employers. But understand, when you're doing it, both of those have to be in the same NOC code. 
So if you're working as a food service supervisor in two different restaurants, um, you can count that. If they're both giving you 20 hours a week, you can totally count that as full time. But if you're working as a food service supervisor in one and a restaurant manager in another, which are two different knock codes, then you, that doesn't work for the purposes of eligibility. Now, I don't want to get that, you know, I don't want to make this more complicated than it needs to be. But the question here that's asked, that this is what it comes down to. Does our one year work experience have to be with one employer? The first year, yes, it does. If you meet the eligibility requirements for the other programs, the minimum entry requirements, um, then you can use other work history to get the remaining two or three years of comprehensive ranking system work experience scores under the skill transferability factors. And so there you go. <laughs> Ram says, I'm doing great in Canada. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you. Okay, let's see here. We're zipping through these ones. We've got a lot of people. Time soaring by. I need to plug in my computer here. I can see that I've actually unplugged it, so I'll, I'll keep that good and charged up. Everybody will be happy now. At least the computer will be happy. And I'll just adjust my little camera. I keep bouncing around a little bit trying to find the right video quality. Anyways, all right, so moving down here, let's see. Okay, here's a good thing here. Okay, it says, um, okay, hi, Mark, I've recently changed, has, okay, has IRCC changed their policy during COVID? I've seen someone get an email where they were informed that they will only evaluate the highest credential. Do you have any update on this? I was hoping to get two degrees. Understand, no, there, they, that is not, there's no change policy. If you're submitting two things, of course they're gonna evaluate both. Um, I don't know which educational assessment agency that you're referring to here, but absolutely they have an obligation to do both. They're not going to, um, uh, you know, they're not gonna just only evaluate one, they will do both. And if they don't, then that's where you complain to IRCC or just let me know because there should be no reason for that. Okay, keep going down here. Um, okay, here's a good question. This is also a general one. So Mary Grace says, hey Mark, I lost my job because of COVID. I'm so sorry to hear that. Then you found another employer, but you still need to apply. Uh, okay, but I found an employer, but still needs to apply for the LMIA. With the new policy for the temporary foreign worker, can I write to IRCC and send proof of application of the LMIA to be able to work? No, you can't. The LMIA has to be there. The policy that IRCC has is to expedite your work permit application in under 10 days is what they're talking about. So your employer still has to get the LMIA. Once they've got it, then you can apply to change conditions. And I hope that your current work permit isn't expiring because that's also an important part of this. Okay. Keep zooming down here, trying to get to as many questions as possible. Okay, Rabiat says, what is your likely CRS score for tomorrow's FSW draw? If we're doing an FSW draw tomorrow, I'm going to go with, well, we could do it. I'm, I'm just going to spitball this one. I'm going to go with 472, okay? That's what I'm going to say. So I'm going to go with 472 that it's going to drop down there. It could be that it drops down lower, but I'm going to go with 472. I think I made a mistake earlier and said that it was 468 and that the last draw, of course it wasn't, it was 478. Um, but I'm going to go with about four, I think 472. I'm going to go with that one. Okay. And once again, Rami, that's my, that's my guess. Okay. Praveen says, I've got a diploma in BTEC. Will it in two or more categories? Praveen, that I can't answer, my friend. That, in terms of your question, I'm not sure what exactly that means, but <laughs> I can't answer that one. John's tuning in from Toronto. Welcome, John. Okay. Um, okay. Now, Preet says, hey, any news on non-essential is being approved in timelines? Um, any put regarding... Yeah, I can't answer on the New Brunswick picking... Uh, yeah, FSPs from the EE. 
I, I, I don't have any insight on that. A lot of the provinces are retracting and they're not issuing the same notifications of interest as they used to just because everybody's in a holding pattern. There are so many Canadians out of, out of work that they're trying to figure out what they need to do at a provincial level. So when it comes to um, the LMIAs, yeah, we also haven't heard anything in terms of them expediting the process. As I've indicated before, the LMIAs are, um, they're working at doing online filing. And if that's the case, it will help to expedite things dramatically. But right now, a lot of it is still paper-based. Okay, Tiago's up in Calgary, great, that's awesome. Okay, zipping through, we're gonna jump to a whole, whole bunch of new ones here. And once again, I apologize if I skip through you guys. Um, I really want to try to answer as many questions as possible, but it's not always it's not always possible. Um, okay, Dania is saying uh, Dania is saying uh, thanks and keep up the good work. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, another one. Will the CRS scores drop after COVID? That's an interesting question. I honestly don't think so. One of the things that causes the scores to drop is the fact that people can't get language tests they can't get their ECAs done. So that's one of the reasons why the CEC scores have continued to drop and drop and drop. But I think also the federal skilled worker, I think if it opens up, I think those scores are gonna continue to, to, to climb. It's super, super competitive. Ha ha, Holy, there we go. Harsey says that's the Indian festival of Holi. Yes, that's right. I've got some pictures of my son actually down in Suriname. There's a real large um, Indian population down in Suriname in South America. And so that was his first uh, Holly. That was his first experience with Holly. You can imagine this this uh, missionary here with a white, you know, with a white shirt and black name tag, and he's all colored, you know, with all different kinds of paint. Quite fun. Very very cool. Yeah, we've got a couple people identifying that. Okay, let's keep zipping through here. I really want to try to get to everybody as much as I can. You're very welcome, Yuv. Um, let's see. Uh, Okay, so here's, um, uh, um, Ka says here, okay, this is Jose, okay. Jose says, um, is IRCC really processing visitor visa now? Because mine has been due a week before the March lockdown, yeah. So they are processing, it's just they're not finalizing. So they don't want to have a whole bunch of applications that all need to be processed. So they are starting to process applications, but they're not finalizing them, where they request your passport, where you get the visa, because that all, it doesn't serve any purpose to give you a visa that's gonna be expiring when you can't travel to Canada with the visa restrictions. And as a visitor, the whole concept of non-optional, non-discretionary, and I'm actually gonna shift here, uh, I'm gonna to shift to the, the shared screen. You can see here, if I go back to the travel restrictions here, one of the things that they are still looking at is um, whether or not your travel is for a non-optional and non-discretionary purpose. And um, within this concept of non-optional, non-discretionary, if I click on this link here, you can see that if it doesn't fit within the concept of something that is, you know, that's essential, really, and essential isn't the best word, then even if you have a visa, you can't come to just visit. There has to be a real valid reason for you coming. So that's one of the issues that we're dealing with. All right, let's head back here to some more questions. Okay, um, we've got a bunch of people asking about what is my prognostication for tomorrow but I'm gonna hold up well, well what did I say 472 I think is what I'd said we'll see okay this is a good one too Alan says hey I've got three years of a part-time job while doing my bachelor's while I was filling the application and this is probably the profile it asked me about the day I was qualified should I stayed after my bachelor's or before or before I'll, I'll be honest it doesn't matter it really truly doesn't matter um, you know, at the end of the day, pick what you feel is what's necessary for that occupation, but it doesn't impact one way or another your, the processing of your application. That question is really designed for federal skilled trade program folks. And so in there, um, you can look at the, the NOC code job description. You can look at the employment requirements, requirements at the bottom. And um, if it says you need a bachelor's degree to do your position, then put the date that you completed your bachelor's. If it doesn't, then it tells you to put your high school, the date you graduated from high school. So that's how I approach that one, Alan. Okay, uh, Herinder, I feel your pain, my friend. He says, I submitted my PR on November the 8th under the Federal Skilled Trade Program. Now I've got no response back, why? Because of COVID-19. 
all overseas applications are basically parked. They're not doing anything with them um, in terms of actually landing and finalizing them. So you're in the same situation as many, many people, Harinder. Okay. Um, all right. What is uh, so? Legion says, "Hey, Mark, um, if I will come in Canada by visit visa, so next you can help for visit to work visa. It's possible. Good question. No, I don't. Um, well." I, I can assist with filing work permit applications, but I'll, I have a client right now who took the advice of, uh, of, a, of their immigration consultant and told them to go down to the border. In this case, it was the Coots port of entry to flagpole. They were transitioning from a visitor to a worker and the consultant told them, oh yeah, go ahead, no problem. Uh, you can flagpole. I don't know if the consultant just didn't read the law or pay attention, but the travel restrictions are such that Anybody who's done any level of, of, um, of review and paying attention to what's happening in the world knows that the border officers are not really facilitating flag pulling. And it's, it's completely advised not to ever send someone down. Well, this person, I'm gonna to try to see if I can fix it, which apparently that's what I do these days, is fix problems from individuals that have gone to consultants first and then had their applications refused or had problems, but this person, has basically given instructions to leave the country and uh, that you know there was there were some allegations that they had worked while they're on their study permit and all kinds of bad things happen when you go to the border and so I'm gonna see if I can fix this for these for this individual otherwise they could be they could be packing all right moving forward um, well we've got a ton of questions here I apologize if I missed your question I really do I'm just gonna zip through down for some people who maybe are are, are have been posting but we're a little bit late getting their questions uh connected um let's see oh i didn't mean to post okay <laughs> you're a genius professor and we're your students in your college and we are getting success with your knowledge and experience thanks ram i actually didn't mean to click that off i don't i don't do this just for the purpose of self-promoting whoever says the nicest things to me gets their questions posted okay so 472 muhammad is what i indicated um Okay, we've answered that one. Um, okay, we've got Jaspreet who's asking about um, early childhood educators, add more in his or her qualifications to see future in Canada. Um, try the SINP, the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program sometimes has programs for um, ECE folks. And so I'd encourage you to check that out. Um, okay, this is a problem, Sammy. So Sammy's saying, hey, I'm tracking my visa application. It says the record not found. My friend, that's not a good sign. You should be able to find it. If you filed it yourself, then you should have access to things in your portal. If you submitted it via an agent or someone else, then that's, yeah. But that's not a good sign when you see that happening. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, RS, okay. Can you suggest any regulated immigration consultant in India because all of the consultants I visited or talked over phone aren't regulated ones and I don't want to give my money to a crook? That's probably a really good decision, I must admit. But RS, I represent people all over the world and the reality is I would be happy to work with you. So um, I can't say uh, I know of any good regulated immigration consultants in India. But obviously, the whole purpose of this forum is to try to <laughs> to try to instill in people this understanding that everyone has a right, and this is my mission to hire an immigration lawyer. Every person has a right to have an immigration lawyer represent them, and that's my position, and that's why I do what I do. And I think RS, you would find it very, very interesting to see how our legal fees compare with those overseas good consultants. And I just have a client who's moving their file over to me. And I think you guys know right now for express entry, the way that I do it, I charge $3,000 Canadian. And this overseas consultant in Pakistan charged $3,000 US. So, and this was a reputable, regulated company, well-respected in India. And uh, my position as always is everybody deserves the right to hire an immigration lawyer. So I'd encourage you to go, go to my page and, uh, and actually check this out and um, and book a consult. Okay, moving back. All right, next question here. This one is, let's see here. Um, all right. 
Uh, <laughs> Ram, I've been a Canadian permanent resident because of your inspiration, which motivated me to move to move forward to Canada. Awesome. I'm really, really happy about that. Okay, Mohan, same thing. People of COPR can't travel. What happens now? Okay, we've talked about this a lot in the past. You need to, before your visa expires, before your, your passport, um, that permanent resident visa and your confirmation of permanent residence expire, you need to notify immigration that you do intend to continue with your application, but you just can't travel because of the restrictions. And so if, you're, if you, your confirmation of permanent residence and PR visa are expiring, use a web form, notify them, and then that will hold your spot. And when the world kind of settles down to some semblance of normal, then you'll be in a position where you can notify them that you're ready to travel. And us as a CBA, the Canadian Bar Association, we have um, suggested to them that they should just make an administrative decision to allow any of those expired passport you know, visas imprinted in your passport and COPRs to be administratively extended to allow people to travel on them. That's our recommendation. We'll see what happens. But that's the process. I help lots of people, uh, Mohan, with this process. And so if you'd like some assistance, just book a consult and I can walk you through the process. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. Brian looks like he's in the same situation. Good day from Hong Kong, anxiously awaiting his PR application to be approved. It's been half a year. Meanwhile, how strict are the officers with the work duties references? Super strict, unbelievably strict. And I've done more consults with people who've had their applications refused for not having a proper reference letter matched to the proper NOC than any other reason. And that is 100% the case. I have a lot of different things that I do for clients and probably more than any is making sure that's correct. In fact, for some people, Brian, when I'm uh, doing the consult, they realize they've made maybe some mistakes or they've gotten the GCMS notes and there's a review required and an indication that they're actually looking into the work history and have doubts about it. Well, in my situation, I have helped numerous clients revise their work history, try to improve it, try to further strengthen it, and then upload it to IRCC to fix that or to try to, to, to remedy the deficiency before a decision is actually made. And there's nothing stopping you from doing that. There's nothing stopping you from correcting something before a decision is made. And with things being held in abeyance and, and applications not moving forward very quickly, I advise people to do that. But oh yeah, Brian, when you look at this work duties to references that you've talked about here, that is an essential part. It has to be accurate. All right, um, let's see what we have here. Um, Param, uh, Paramampal says, can you please tell me about Institute or is it regarding immigration diploma? Oh, I see what you're saying. Sorry for the confusion, guys. This is something that I often kind of fall into. I just assume that everybody that's tuning in has always been um, a part of, <laughs> has been watching this for years. And then some people, let me just look in here. Okay, I'm just going to shift for a second here to this screen. This is what I'm referring to. So we'll close this out here. This is what I'm referring to. So this is my Canadian Immigration Institute. And this is where you can go, and now this is probably as good a time as any, to go to my DIY courses go to my express entry complete step by step to doing it yourself if you want to learn more about it what it looks like what's contained in it you can go here you can scroll down and read all about it you can watch the the all of the testimonials from previous um, people that have purchased it and i think as i go through all these people which i've talked about before mashi here is the only one who's still waiting because of the travel restrictions to come all of them are now permanent residents of canada and 100 percent money back guarantee 30 day money back guarantee. If you go in, you don't like it. I understand that's there. And then if you click on purchase guide right here and you go in and you type in the code EEDIY50. That's probably not very good. Let me cap locks it. E -E, I'll give it a cap locks. EEDIY50. And I think you guys can see that now. If you type that in right here in the coupon code portion, uh, coupon code portion and click apply, it will drop 50% off, but I don't advertise this anywhere. It's only to you guys that are watching the video. 
So if people don't take the time to come watch the video, support, ask questions, then they simply don't have access to this code. All right, good stuff. Okay, let's jump back and continue on. So that's what that is, Paramount Paul. You can go in, you can get access to that course, and it is awesome. I love it. Okay, zipping through, let's see what else we have going here. Um, I'll answer this one from this, probably the Express Entry Law Facebook group. Is there a chance for CRS to go below 450 for FSW? I really don't think so, you guys. I really don't think so. And I'll show you why. So let's just jump back here, and then I'll go back to, we'll go here. We don't need this one. And we'll go EE -E, um, rounds, rounds of invitations. We'll pull that up. And I want to show you why. So if you look at the numbers, when you go to this site, this is where the government lists how many people are in the pool. So the last draw you can see here was on July the 8th. This actual total here is from July 6th. So the 3,900 people right here that were pulled out, they came out of this group. And you can see here, 478 was the draw total. I previously mistakenly said 468, but it's 478. And I think it's maybe 472. We could probably do a better calculation. But what that means is, if you're looking at the total, so 478 is in the upper portion of this. So these individuals here, a portion of them, and everybody above, up to 500, and these PNPs, well, there's 652 that probably have some French and some other things, and then anyone over 600 is PNP. They were all drawn out under that last draw. So I'm looking at how many people are still in the queue. And if you're asking, the question was, will it go down to 450? You can see here, at 450, right here, really 451 and above, we have 8,000, 15,000, 19, 20,000. You can see there's over 20,000, probably 21,000 people that are all above 450. Now, some of those may be CECs. Some of those may be FSWs. A lot of them may be. Um, and we don't know the exact total, but it's going to be really, really difficult for the FSWs to drop down to that level. All right, moving on to the next question. Um, gift deeds, yes, officers will if they're done properly. And where can you find a proper gift deed? In my course. <laughs> so <laughs> if you go into the course, you will definitely see the gift deeds that are there, the samples. And I'll just show you guys very quickly what I'm referring to here. If you go back to the Canadian Immigration Institute, I'm going to go back here and I'm actually going to go into my login. And I can't remember if I actually created this or not. Uh, let's see here. We'll just see if I can sign in. I'm not sure if that's the correct password. Oh, seriously? Okay, one more time. If I don't get this right, don't even remember my own. Nope, I don't. I can't even show you because <laughs> this is what happens when you move over to a new computer and then uh, all of the past uh, cookies and everything that you had saved. And I just started using my MacBook Pro to do these videos. And, uh, and so, yeah. Anyways, there's a whole list of documents in the document checklist section within the course. Sample documents for everything. Why do I not make those documents visible to everybody? Why do I not post them? Take reference letters, for instance. I have this issue all the time with people. Reference letters where they use templates that they get online and then they use them for all of the different employers. And then all of the employers are using the same template. So it all looks the same with just a different letterhead. If I'm an immigration officer, I'm wondering or not if that's fake. All right, we are just about nearing the very, very end of the video today. Um, I'm going to jump on I need to take a quick peek to see when my consults start today. <laughs> it's been a very busy, and I do have one in three minutes. So I'm going to have to wrap this one up today. I want to express extreme appreciation, as always, for all of you guys. And for your questions, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get to all of them. There are so many people that have posted lots of good questions. And, um, and I've tried to, like I said, I've tried to get through all of them. Um, Let's see here, uh, like Freya, for instance, she says, does someone have a chance at 40? Really, really difficult. Even if you're off the charts, you're not going to qualify through the Federal Skilled Worker Program. You just won't rank high enough. You lose too many points by the time you get to that age, Freya. 
So the only hope for you is to get a job in Canada or somehow get a study permit. Um, you could maybe take French, but generally speaking, really, really tough. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can squeeze in just a couple more last ones. Um, okay, here's a question. Holman says, is it possible to apply for a study permit while you're in Canada? Um, study permits have to be applied for outside of Canada. You have to leave and re-enter in order to get it. And with the COVID restrictions right now, the travel restrictions, no officer is going to want to be issuing you um, a, a visa. And in fact, the study permit probably won't even be approved necessarily if it's your first time. It, you're going to sit and it's going to be pending and it's just never going to be approved. Very, very difficult. Okay, let's see here what else we have. Um, oh, two minutes here. <laughs> And I apologize once again for not being able to answer more of your questions. I really, really wish that I could spend all day and maybe one day I'll just have some massive answer question, but uh, question and answer series. Um, okay, and uh, boy, let's see. I think I'm gonna have to end there, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, we ran out of time as always. I'm gonna pull Holman off here. I want to thank everybody for watching. This is Canadian immigration lawyer Mark Holthy expressing my sincere appreciation to everybody that's watched. I want to wish all of you safety as we're still battling this pandemic here um, and all over the world. I hope you and your family are safe, that you're practicing social distancing, that you are doing all you can to avoid um, this crazy pandemic COVID-19. I want to express appreciation for everyone who's asked a question that I wasn't able to get to. Remember, if you have a situation that's urgent, you really need help, it relates specifically to you and it's not something of general interest to everyone else, then book a consult. Go to HolthyLaw.com, my, my website, and as I shift to the next screen, you're going to be able to see, um, and there's my consult, you're going to be able to see that there is um, a QR code that you can just put your phone over um, and uh, if it's on your computer screen or hold one phone up to another and it'll take you right to the consult page and also to the Canadian Immigration Institute's express entry DIY course. So wishing you guys all the best as you navigate this crazy world that we call immigration. Take care.